Hello and welcome. It is time to show you one of my favorite cities in the Netherlands, Haarlem. We arrived by train. The station of Haarlem is called Haarlem Central and it is an important historic building. The original Haarlem train station was opened 1839. Back then it was just a wooden structure. And the building that you can see today is from 1908 and is the only station in the Netherlands in an Art Nouveau style. It was voted one of the most beautiful stations by the Dutch people many years in a row. Furthermore, and good to know, the station was used as a movie set for Ocean's 12 in 2004, where it represented Amsterdam Central Station. From the station we walk into the center. The center of Harlem is densely packed and therefore perfect to explore by foot. While we stayed this time in the center, this beautiful city is way bigger and stretches over an area of 32 square kilometers. And around 160,000 people live here. Harlem is the capital of the province of North Holland and part of the metropolitan area Randstad. And because we are in the Netherlands, I have to mention it, the city is only two meters above waterline. The first settlement is more than 3,600 years old, but the first time Haarlem could call itself a city was in the year 1240, when Count Wilhelm II granted Haarlem city rights. The center of Haarlem is packed with historic buildings and significant landmarks. Haarlem has a rich history dating back to pre-medieval times, as it lies on a strip of land above sea level known as the Strandwall, or Beet Ridge, which connects Leiden to Alkmaar. The people on this narrow strip of land struggled against the water of the North Sea from the west and the water of the Ai and the Harlem Lake from the east. Harlem became wealthy with toll revenue that is collected from ships and travelers moving on this busy route. As shipping became increasingly important economically, the city of Amsterdam became the main Dutch city of North Holland during the Dutch Golden Age. The town of Haafweg became a suburb and Haarlem became a quiet bedroom community. And for this reason Haarlem still has many of its central medieval buildings intact. Nowadays many of them are on the Dutch Heritage Register, known as Rijksmonument. The St. Joseph Kerk is one of them and was built between 1841 and 1843 and designed in a neoclassical style. From here we walk down the street and towards the market. The Great Markt, or in Dutch Grote Markt, opens every Monday and Saturday and merchants offer their products between 9 and 4. You can find flowers, baked goods, pottery, cheese, carpets and many more things. On the market stands the city hall. It was built in the 14th century and replaced the Count's Council after it burned down partially. Speaking of fire, in the year 1328 nearly all of Harlem burned down. While this is the official seat of the mayor, the current government house of the province of North Holland is the Villa Welgelegen, built in the 18th century. But back to the market, and you might have already spotted it in the background. The Grote Kerk or Sint Babu Kerk, a reformed Protestant church and former Catholic cathedral. The church was first mentioned in the year 1307, but unfortunately burned down and was rebuilt in the 14th century. The interior of the church has also changed little over the years. Unfortunately, it has been painted many times by local painters, most notably by Peter Jans Zandredam and the Berheid brothers. Based on these paintings, work has been done to reconstruct the interior. The stained glass windows of the Bavo have suffered through the years from neglect. It is hard to imagine that Harlem was an important center for stained glass art in the 16th century since so little evidence of it is still visible today. The organ of the St. Bavo Kerk is one of the world's most historically important organs. It was built by the Amsterdam organ builder Christian Müller. Upon completion it was the largest organ in the world with 16 voices and 32 foot pedal towers. Outside of the church again, we run into the Ten Boom Museum, the museum dedicated to the hiding places, the subject of a book by Corrie Ten Boom. The history of the Ten Boom family testifies of their love and commitment to the Jewish people. The Corrie Ten Boom Museum can only be visited with a guided tour, but you can also do a virtual tour on the website. 
Down the street we come along the Spine, the river that crosses through Harlem and was used to cycle fresh water into the channels of Harlem. On its shores you can find the Tylus Museum. It is the oldest museum of the Netherlands. The main subjects are art, science and natural history and it owns a number of works by Michelangelo and Rembrandt. For 15 euro you can have a look but we wanted to explore more. The British invite you to cross the river and give you a different perspective of the center of Harlem. Timing is everything and right after we crossed the bridge it opened to give way to these boats. Pleasure boating in the summer has been an important Harlem tourist attraction. Though it is not possible to travel all of the old channels as in Amsterdam, the creation of the new land in the Harlem Semea from 1852 onwards meant that the city could no longer refresh the water in its channel using the Spana River. The increase in industry made the water quality even worse and in 1859 the Oude Gracht, a city channel, stinks so badly in the summer that it was filled in to create a new street called the Gedempte Oude Gracht. Apologies for my pronunciation. Located on the Grote Houtstraat, Harlem's main shopping street, Proveniers House is a collection of fine old buildings dating from the 17th and 18th century that really should be included on your list of places to visit. Historically, this attractive area has housed a cross section of city folk, from nuns and priests to merchants and retired guildsmen. Today, it's a splendid area to stroll around as you soak up the atmosphere and explore the side streets that peel off into the street's many quiet nooks and crannies. We came along this church, it's the Harlem's New Church, also called Nieuwkerk, and was built between 1645 and 1649, with the Renaissance Tower and clock dating from 1795. On the day we were there, the church was closed, but usually it's allowed to see the Baroque tomb of Willem of Orange. Overall, Harlem is a beautiful place to be, there are way more important sites, and we might return to continue our exploration. For example, the Cathedral of St. Babo, built by Joseph Kuipers from 1895 to 1930. Or the Kuppelgefangenis, a former prison that is one of the three Panopticon-style buildings situated in the country. And maybe the Amsterdam support, Harlem's only surviving city gate built in the early 14th century. But for now, we finish with a beer at Jopekerk, a beer brewery from Harlem that is housed in an old church. If you liked what you saw and you want to follow along on our next trip, consider subscribing. Till next time, 